What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Trans Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today is episode four of the Reverse Flow Smoker Build Series, and it's gonna be a good one. Today, we're cutting out these doors, making some hinges, making a backstop, and I don't know, we'll see how far we get. So let's do it. Again with the wrong catchphrase. Coming up. So if you caught the last few episodes, we got this thing on some big heavy duty casters. Nice heavy duty frame, beautiful firebox. I gotta tell you, it's always great when the firebox is done. That's just a pain in the butt to make. But this thing is looking nice and level. We got the doors drawn on there. If you wanna learn about that, you can check out last week's episode. And now it's time to bust out the angle grinder and make a few cuts to get these doors started. <laughs> So basically I'm going through and cutting out just the corners all the way through, just from here to here on every single door. And if you're new to angle grinding, again, like I mentioned in the other video, I like to use the thinnest discs possible because it makes such a clean little cut. I mean, it's just about as wide as the pencil mark, which is good for door alignment. And this is how I usually start. This is not cut all the way through. This is just a light etch because once you create the groove, then the disc will want to sit in it and it makes it a lot easier to cut a really straight line if you trace it out first. Look at this glove landed, classic. So we're doing the exact same thing we did for making the hinges on the firebox and on that one, which I don't think I showed when I did it. What I like to do is go and mark it right where the bend needs to be. If we just left it like this, we wouldn't get much welding space because of the curb and we need to fit some flat bar under there, which is why we do that little hump that we're gonna do next. But the problem is we need to heat this up in order to bend it and that mark will be gone immediately. So what I like to do is take the angle grinder and just put a little notch just so I know exactly where to bend it so the bend isn't too high or too low and try and get the same consistent looking hinge across the board. Got two pieces of three quarter angle that I'm just gonna line up with that notch we made. And oh, I shouldn't have waited. Ooh. And there we go. Nice little bend. Ow, oh, that's getting hot. And little side note for you folks, if you're like me and you're just kind of bending by eye, at this point you can kind of judge it by this line and that line, and uh, this one's clearly looking a little bit wonky, so I'm just gonna straighten that out real quick. There we go, nice and straight. Don't tell anyone I do that. And now is always a good time to bust out some flat bar and make sure you made those gaps big enough. It looks like we're good to go. And before we weld these hinges on, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them down a little bit because they're looking a little long. We're gonna go about four and a half inches. And you could obviously just start with shorter pieces of round like this, but it makes it a little bit easier to bend if you've got some extra room on there. Yoink. Again, good. Ooh, very nice. This video is brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is a company that was founded to give people a better shave at a fair price. And I know what you're thinking. Hey there, Chudley, you have a full beard. You're clearly not shaving every day. So why are you talking about razors right now? And to your point, I don't shave every day, but I do use razors quite often to keep these cheek lines nice and clean as well as the neckline and anywhere else. And because I don't shave every day, razors don't last me very long because they get rusty. They're super expensive, but luckily Harry's is here to help. With Harry's, you get high quality, German engineered, premium quality at an affordable price. Got some nice deep finger grooves so you don't drop them if 
they get too slippery with the shaving cream and whatnot. And what I got here is the starter set. We've got this beautiful razor with super sharp blades on it. Comes with two extra blades in this little carrying case. It's got a travel guard as well as this foaming shave gel. And it smells very good. It's also great for sensitive skin too because it's made with aloe and hyaluronic acid. Good for the skin as well. I'm starting to look a little overgrown. Let's take care of that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So sharp, Ooh, looking nice and clean, nice and edged up. I must say, I love everything about Harry's, the quality of the build, the convenience, the low cost, and the fact that they're shipped right to your door, and they have a 100% money back guarantee. I'm a big fan of Harry's and their subscription service, and for a very limited time, you can go to harrys.com where you can use my link to get this Harry's starter pack for five bucks. That's a $13 value for just $5 at harrys.com when you use my link to get this lovely starter pack. Thank you, Harry's. So here's a little lesson that I haven't messed up in a very long time, but when I cut these doors, if you remember, I pre-cut this and that, and I always shoot over this way. That way, when we put these hinges on, the door will stay completely aligned once we cut this out and you're good to go. And you always want to shoot far enough on this side because the angle grinder disc is so wide that you need to be able to cut through this without going through your hinge. And I missed over here. As you can see, there's a little spot right in there, and I tried to get it with the angle grinder, but I started cutting into the hinge, so I'm gonna have to fix that later on. So now I'm kind of in a pickle because I can't cut through the door without going through the hinge. Luckily, it's only a little tiny speck. So what I'm gonna do is just get in there with a hacksaw blade and try and get that thing cut. Oh, got it. Woo, nice. I tell you, it's not fun cutting through three eighth inch thick steel with an angle grinder, but nice clean door hinges work well. So I'm gonna go through now with a flap disc and clean up all these scraggly sharp edges because that looks dangerous. Right about now, I'm regretting doing the double door because now I have to do that again. All right, after a lot of grinding and sanding, our doors are knocked out. This thing's really starting to look like a smoker. Pretty happy about that. Doors look nice and even too. Very nice. So now what we need to do is get some flat bar cut up and start making the binding. That way we can get these doors open and closed a little bit easier. And these doors cut out pretty cleanly. Nice and tight. You can see this is bowing out a little bit. It's also sunken in right there on both of these doors. That can happen with your tanks or your pipes. Not much you can do about it. Sometimes they'll spring inwards like these. Sometimes they'll spring outwards and there's really not much you can do about it unless you take the whole door off and try and re-roll it or something. So I'm going to just roll with the punches and see what happens and hopefully they don't end up too bad. But at least these doors are still perfectly aligned, welded forever. And we can try and manipulate the flat bar a little bit to make up for any weird gaps. But this part can be a little bit tricky. <laughs> Now for this next part, it can be a little bit tricky. Many ways to go about it. If you've got some really strong clamps, you can do that. You can try and pre-bend this thing. But what I usually do just to make sure it doesn't warp too much is I like to tack it up here. That way we can bend it all the way down and we'll tack it again down here. And now we've got a nice tight seal all the way around this door. And when I go through and fill in all this weld, we don't have to worry about the door warping because it is tacked shut in perfect place in alignment. And then down the road, once everything is cooled down, we can just zip this top off, zip that bottom off, and theoretically have a perfectly aligned door. But you know, sometimes it doesn't go that way.
So at this point I went around and I did full welds all the way around the exterior and then my welder overheated so I decided to take some time and shine up the metal bars a little bit. And now this whole door is piping hot, which is why I tack it closed because it could warp. So I'm gonna let this cool down for a while before we zip those tails off. So when it comes to making the handles, very similar to making the hinges. I got some round tube, I got some round stock, and I just put some magnets down here and separated them with two pieces of scrap uh, 1.5 tube just to make sure that they are as straight and even and have the most consistent angle across the board. Not much to it. Although I'm sure there's much more intelligent ways to go about putting on handles, but hey, it looks good to me. Let's see if it works. Oh, love it. Pilates. I don't know what Pilates are. And of course, with literally one weld left to go, just to get this side of this doorstop attached, I run out of welding wire. Oh, you hate to see it, folks. So frustrating. And of course, I don't have any other welding wire on hand at the moment, so I guess we're gonna have to uh, stop for today and come back and finish this tomorrow. Very unsatisfying. That's better. It's all okay. Ah, looking good. Have you lined up? Yup. Ah, perfect. Alright y'all, and that is it. That is how to fabricate some doors on a smoker. Looking nice and good. I just hit these with a flap disc to clean it up a little bit. I'll probably do that again later on, but this thing is starting to come together. Looking very nice. Big old backsplash. Heavy duty hinges. Some nice spinning. <laughs> spinny handles there and we're getting pretty close to firing this thing up all right john that is it for this episode that is how to make some doors on your offset smoker there are many ways you can go about doing this plenty of different styles but this is a pretty traditional pretty classic way of doing it and i'm pretty pleased with how they look are they perfect no but they will most certainly get the job done but all that being said if you enjoyed this video let me know by hitting that subscribe button let youtube know by dropping a like on this video if you got your own builds going on be sure to tag me on instagram at chuds barbecue i love to see what y'all are building big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos and until the next time I see you please go cook something outside peace